be connected. You know? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because the whole point is like you want you're trying to say that um you want more check and balance in the company, right? So mm-hmm. even HR, which is in the company, can abuse power. So you want to be able to say, okay, this is a medical person. They 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 will uh screen based on their uh, technical knowledge, things right. like that. Yeah. Right. Okay. But I think the rest is really good. Good job, guys. Yay! Caps to all of us. Thank you. Thank you. How so? How are you feeling? Um, how are you feeling about everything going into your press statement, going into your session? we doing I. <laughs> um, I just actually wanted to ask you questions regarding like presenting, right? Hmm. So because this is technically a press statement, but then we're also showing visual aid, so it's a presentation, hmm. right? So it's so it's actually like there's like a little bit of like a overlap. Uh, overlap and like a, uh, like in, you know in terms of like how you would start so like Daniel will be starting right but then he will start off based on our slide so he'll be like hi we're, I'm good morning we're group six and we were assigned case study two that kind of general thing yeah. and then he will go through the board of directors oh uh, no before the board of directors he will go through the flow of our presentation and then only like technically the press statement will start I feel so mm-hmm. it's like I feel like in terms of like would we would we call it um, press, statement. Sta- press statement or we call it presentation if you get what I'm trying to say I see okay because based on your actual uh, instructions itself it says press statement I encourage mm-hmm. you to say press statement and okay. I even- to treat it like a press statement as well okay so even though like the beginning because when we start off with like uh, good morning um, we are team six do we need to do that or do you think it's a little bit re- weird because I think uh, because obviously they will know uh, mm-hmm. what team is coming up they have like their schedule right so they'll know yeah. that you are team six um, go in there and introduce yourself uh, introduce your topic I guess you don't have to say case study I w- uh, you don't necessarily just introduce it as a topic and then introduce you and then go into introducing yourselves as like the five roles the CEO CFO CEO treat it like a person I would say yeah okay. because you don't want to waste any I mean you don't want to waste any like you have 10 minutes to do the press statement, five minutes of Q&A. You don't want to use up any of the time with the unnecessary stuff. Uh, the mm. stuff that they would already know because they would have planned the, the structure, right? Yeah. Well, actually, we're trying to use up the time because yeah, uh, time, but if, we, if, we are if, pretty if, under. If, so, yeah, if <laughs> it's like, like, just, like, like just a normal uh, press statement, uh, <laughs> we took about uh, how many minutes? Five six, minutes. Five, five minutes. fifty-three, six minutes-ish. Uh, yeah. yeah. Only, oh, only five minutes. Yeah. yeah. And then when we added a little bit more, like uh, in the beginning, like hi, we are group. Uh, yeah, you are doing seven minute, seven minute class. Uh, yeah, we are doing <laughs> assigned study two. Yeah, mm. and then we slow it like our speech. <laughs> then we got to seven ish minutes. But you um you don't have a script, right? You are. Uh, we point. we do we do technically you do have a like yeah you have a script. So even with mm. the script, it is about five plus minutes. Yes. It's, yes. Yeah. I see. Okay. Okay. Wait. Question. Concise and we're very concise with what we're trying to say because we don't like, we think like a politician. Don't try to be too concise. You wanna yeah. have a lot of flowery words and make yourself sound great. You know what I mean? Yeah. Amanda, yeah. sorry. How long do I have with them? Um. Until you came in about uh, ten thirty, you should have until eleven. Okay. Can we do yeah. a practice round? Of your ses- like your whole thing, like you read me your script so I can hear what it sounds like. Sure. Okay, sure. Yeah. Um, do you want it with the visual aid? Okay, Serena's doing it already. <laughs> practice as if it is the, the actual cool. thing. Practice as if it is the actual thing. All right, all right, all right. All right. Uh, one Okay, ready whenever you guys are. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are Team 6 and we were assigned case study 2. Before we begin, let me go through the flow of our presentation. We will start with the introduction to, of, to the board of directors, the problem statement, 
speed care airlines response amendments and additions to the policy and we will end with a short q a session let me introduce the board of directors of speed care airlines our ceo ms reshna wimganesan our chief operational officer ms lee shi yun our chief financial officer officer ms lim yivon and chief technical officer ms afrina amin and myself the chief human resource officer ahmad din the problem statement we have identified is as follows in accordance with speed care airlines policy pregnant great b stewardesses are pressured to resign or forcefully terminated perceived as a symptom of larger inequalities and discrimination this issue affects the well-being job security and performance of our female employees dissatisfaction towards this unsupportive work environment adversely impacts customer service speed care airlines is committed to creating ethical equal inclusive and employee centric policies decrease productivity due to an unsatisfactory work environment and low morale will reflect negatively on the impact on the company's image and success our company policies should embrace positive values and promote gender parity we believe that every individual is an invaluable asset and their well-being is a priority we regret the oversight with regards to discrimination in our policy in order to progress with the current needs of today's society we have addressed the issue that occurred in the company proactively miss aina a fellow employee was one of the victims of our antiquated policy which encourage gender bias the airline manager merely acted in accordance with our policy and we take collective responsibility for his actions speed care airlines acknowledges that amendments and additions need to be made to the existing policy we will revisit miss aina's case and if the termination is proven unjust she will be fairly compensated and her services in the company will be reinstated the company is currently in the process of revising our policy and hope to create a more inclusive and equitable work atmosphere now our chief executive officer miss reshna will elucidate the policy measures that speed care airlines will adopt Thank you, Mr. Ahmad Daniel. Uh, good afternoon, members of the press. Uh, afternoon. Yeah, I would like to recapitulate the words of the company's chief human resource officer and express my regret for the distress caused to all parties in this situation. As an airline company, our priority is to provide high-quality services to our customers and stakeholders without compromising the needs of our female employees. Regrettably, this was not reflected in our company policies. Therefore, Speed Care Airlines will take necessary measures to revise and enhance our policies to reflect inclusivity and equality in the workplace to prevent discrimination. The company recognizes that the original policy was biased towards women, thus permitting the manager to terminate pregnant stewardesses without just cause and excuse. For this reason, the company will look into making the following amendments and additions to our policies. First, resignation of pre pregnant grade B stewardesses is optional, and termination can only be considered if and or when the stewardess has committed major misconduct or has proven to underperform in their duties while pregnant. We recognize the work performance is subjective. For pregnant staff, biweekly mental, emotional, and physical check-ins will be conducted by a professional and recorded by the airline's HR department. These records will be used to gauge if pregnancy conditions are the source of underperformance. Next, the airline manager is prohibited from victimizing and or pressuring pregnant staff from resigning. For the safety and welfare of all pregnant staff, pregnancy should be disclosed to the airline manager without fear of termination. Additionally, an option will be provided for pregnant grade B stewardesses in our policy. they can be temporarily transferred or reassigned to other positions in the airline for instance uh, as ground admin staff after their first trimester of pregnancy or if they have received written doctor's orders to not fly for medical reasons the positions offered will be based on availability nonetheless reassignment and or transfer will be granted to ensure their job security 
temporary transfer or reassignment wages will involve a small percentage deduction from their original salary for the great B stewardesses. Speedcare Airlines also hopes to support all pregnant staff by initiating a fund to provide monetary support based on their current job position. Since Speedcare Airlines is a private entity, maternity leave will be granted to all of our female staff for 60 consecutive days with full pay. In line with the Employment Act of 1955, if a female employee has been employed for 90 days and has worked for at least one day after her fifth month of pregnancy, she's entitled to 60 days maternity allowance, even if terminated on grounds of misconduct. Upon grade B, grade B stewardesses return from maternity leave, they are given the option to remain as ground admin staff or return as a stewardess. Either option will require our staff to go through a series of assessments to determine that they are fit to resume work. For those who choose to resign during the maternity leave, a written notice at least four weeks prior to the stipulated return date should be forwarded to the ally manager. Lastly, most moving forward, the company will not tolerate gender discrimination and unfair dismissal. All of our staff will undergo due process if they are to be terminated. Speedcare Airlines will be proactive to institute an anti-discrimination policy to protect all of our staff, regardless of gender, sexual orientation, race, religion, and ethnicity. We are grateful that this issue was highlighted by our female staff. Speedcare Airlines is committed to adapt and make the proposed amendments and additions with immediate effect in our company policies to cater to the needs of its dedicated female staff. Gender discrimination in the workplace is an affliction an affliction, and we will play our part to eliminate it. Thank you. Okay, that was pretty good, guys. Now it's around, so I think you guys took around. Actually, it's not bad. It's more than five minutes. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> I think I, I checked the time. I think it was about like eight minutes this time. I went yeah. so <laughs> Yeah, 7.8. Okay, that's yeah. good. Yeah, I think... Um, so if you want to, so since you're already around seven, eight minutes, you have about two minutes, right? That you might want to fill up. Um, Daniel, I think honestly, you did a you did a really good job at articulating yourself. Very professional, very strong. So it's a really good, <clears throat> it's a really good start to the press statement. Um, so I think also your speed is uh, extremely good. So you, uh, the beginning, I think you guys are very very strong already. Uh, Reshna, I think. Um, I think you have a very powerful female voice that is kind of um, a good contrast to what Daniel is doing. And it does give a very uh, united front in terms of gender within the company. So you guys complement each other extremely well. So, uh, but maybe you want to, so I think in the beginning, you're a bit faster, but if yeah. you do want to like take it down, slow it yeah. down, relax yourself. Yeah. I, I think you can just like breathe before you start and relax mm -hmm. yourself and go into it. You're going to be extremely, it's going to sound extremely strong. The way you guys are presenting to me, I think it's extremely, uh, it's extremely good. It sounds super powerful, super confident in your policies as well. So you have that as an advantage. Um, the only thing maybe I could highlight for you guys is, Another thing I realized during your the policy part when you were um, uh, talking about it is actually number two. Can we go back to that slide? Yeah, so in number two, I realized um, another question that could come up is you said that you know uh, managers are prohibited from victimizing and pressuring pregnant staff from resigning. Mm -hmm. um, what, so here you have that pregnancy should be disclosed. Mm -hmm. So that is the onus obviously on the S with it. But what is the onus on the managers? So how are you keeping the managers in check and making sure that they are not victimizing and pressuring pregnant women? Because obviously these things are subtle, right? Mm -hmm. um, so maybe one thing you guys could think of is would you, uh, before someone becomes a manager, would you put them through a specific kind of training on how to manage staff in general? And one of the modules might be pregnant women. So something that you can consider adding to your mm -hmm. guideline as well, just to make it a little bit more concrete. Because right. here it looks like the, the work is for the women. The women have to do the, the job of disclosing it, but how are you keeping the managers in check simultaneously? Mm. Yeah, mm. that's the thing I picked up. Um, and another thing, maybe just in terms of lengthening your time, mm. <clears throat> you guys are extremely right. Um, you are concise, that's for sure. You're very concise. You give me the, you give me the point straight. Now, I want you to take it a step uh, further and think a little like a politician. 
So I realized that during your ending is where you really, um, you go harder on your values as a company. You try to say like, we do this because we believe in uh, uh, equality. We believe in this company culture. We're trying to create and, and we want to, so you do that a lot at the ending. I want to, I hope that you guys can maybe think about how do you, how can you split in your values and make it a little bit stronger even throughout your uh, feed. So during Daniel's part, even yours, you can kind of, because you, you, you're kind of going into like, okay, this is the company, it's what we're doing, we regret. But I think you can take a little bit extra time to, to emphasize why these values are <clears throat> important, important to you and your company, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and not just because obviously it affects sales, like that's not the thing that you want to stress on. You want to talk about how you believe in company culture and you want to change the way the airline industry runs, for example, you want to be the model airline industry, whatever, like really flowery things that you can kind of add to mm-hmm. really showcase value. So mm-hmm. that's one way uh, that you can at least just take up a little bit more time doing press day. Because keep in mind that a press statement is for the people who are watching you, the people who mm-hmm. are judging you, the people who are scrutinizing you. So it's mm-hmm. not, it's not, a, it's not a, a lawsuit. You know, in a lawsuit, you want to be concise. <laughs> you want to give them the facts. In a press statement, you want to give them your best self. Think about it as a first date. Right, you show up with your best self. So you you want to showcase the kind of values that you stand for, and you want to make it like strong. Uh, you can do that as well to add a little bit more. I think something like that. If you take a little bit, Daniel, you take a little bit more, Rashna. That's like one mm-hmm. one eight. Like mm-hmm. you up close to ten minutes. It's yeah. really really good. Other mm-hmm. than that, honestly, you guys fantastic job. Like really great. Like I think super super strong. I'm so I I'm so excited for you guys to go and do your session later. Yay. Thank, you, um, thank you, thank you so much. Do you have like is there, I think now we can just like if you have any other smaller stuff you want to address that like, you can because we still have time. Um so we can go through anything else if you feel like you want to to check. Um I guess I probably oh, asked. Yeah, the, so the the rest of you actually I haven't really heard from you guys. How are you feeling about the QA session? Nervous. <laughs> Nervous? Do you think um do you think you can uh, pick it up if somebody asks you like a, a hard question, for example? I like, hope so. <laughs> we sound very uh, nervous. Shinmi. How do I pronounce your name properly? Sorry. Shinmi. Oh sh- you can call me Serena if you want. Okay. Serena, yes. So you seem very shy, Serena. <laughs> Yvonne, how are you feeling? <laughs> oh my god it's so cute you guys are like the uh, very shy but it's okay listen uh, for Q&A just keep in mind that um, during the presentation which is going, which is, will happen first right uh, Reshma mm-hmm. and Daniel is basically setting the scene for you guys already so all like the points that most likely they're going to ask will already be spoken you just have to reinstate it and like reaffirm it during Q&A because I think um, in your policies, you guys have addressed almost a lot, like a lot of things. Like even I can't find a lot of faults in it anyway while I'm listening to it, right? Mm-hmm. So um, if they ask you questions, it'll either be just to clarify on a couple of things. Um, so if you don't, if, if for example, like you feel like you're a little bit unsure about certain parts, make sure to clarify that before you go into your session because they might ask you. Um, and if you do feel like somebody takes you, somebody takes you by surprise, you get a question you don't know how to answer, uh, finesse it like just talk about values make yourself sound good you know even if you don't know what to do on a policy level the point is just to 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 remember that you want to put out your best front so that's how you should answer it makes sense okay i hope you guys so okay i haven't heard so much from you guys um yet so i'm like i'm hoping you guys feel as excited as confident guys just refer to our script if you feel like you don't know how to answer like Davina said, like, just reiterate what we've already said in our presentation. Yeah. It's all there. So we, 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 we should be good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, are, we are winning this, guys. Yes. Let's go. I'm rooting for you guys. I don't top, know top three, you go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think, um, how, so is this your first policy competition? Yes. yes. Oh, yes, all of you, fact, yes. policy competition. Honestly, yeah. really good, really good, like amazing effort for for, for our first time. I wouldn't have guessed. Thank mm-hmm. you. <laughs> yeah. 
are you guys um are you guys thinking about doing a career in policy making or anything like yeah okay. yeah okay yeah. i mean like i'm i've already graduated and like um that's kind of like the direction for now like um that i'm going into so i've been working with a few policy think tanks oh uh what kind of think tanks um do you know ksi oh yes yes I yes agree. yeah i work with them and it's like a lot of autonomy so i get to pick kind of projects and policies that i want to look into any so, yeah. type of policies that you're more interested in like topics Oh uh, yeah, I'm currently working on um um orang asli women and their contribution oh. to the environment and how they both are interrelated. So yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I think people for people are uh, only recently I've seen it I've seen it they get picked up a little bit more like when people are talking about environments they're talking about the communities affected. Mm-hmm. You see it's quite um I feel like it's needed lah the the topic a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Because people tend to like everyone's like, when you think environment they try to go big right they're like oh we have to do this we have to do this but we forget that in our own backyard there are people who dedicated their whole lives you know to take care of the yeah. environment so we should start there. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh that's really nice. Then you're also doing thinking about uh doing something in policy. Yep. Uh, any any specific type of policy? Um, social economy. Stuff. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay, I, it's something that I've been trying to learn. I've been looking at ideas. Uh, do you know ideas? Mm-hmm. They have a bunch of like research papers they put out. Uh, I've been trying to read a little more more of the economic ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, but super interesting. Well, what do you do again? Uh, I'm doing my uh, degree in civil engineering, but you know, I I don't see myself like um too long in the engineering um uh, stuff. So yeah, it's 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 just. My start point lah, macam like, tu. Before mm. I can go further, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. You guys seem like that. The suit already. You are prepared. Like <laughs> <laughs> How about uh, Yvonne, uh, Serene? What do you guys? Are, are you guys interested in policy making, or are you trying this out because you want to learn something new? How's the whole experience for you? I not. Not particularly interested, but I feel like this is something new that I wanted to try. So I guess this is a good experience. Hmm, that's nice. What what um are you doing right now? I'm studying medicine. Medicine. Okay, okay. Uh, what year are you? First year. I'm in fourth year. Oh, fourth year. So clinical year. Yeah. And which uh hospital? Um, I'm based in Kota Kinabalu, Sabah. So oh, hospital oh, Queen Elizabeth. I hear that um in your housemanship in Sabah will be the best experience lah compared to what they feel like in in Semenanjung. Maybe because the patients here and people here are generally nicer and less mean. <laughs> I guess. It's not. <laughs> it's, it's true. It's true. It's, <laughs> East East Malaysians are a whole other breed. Yeah. Yeah, I've been to Sabah only once, but the the environment there. I've been thinking about it since. I just want to go back. If this the minute this COVID thing is over, like <laughs> I'm on a plane there, you know. Even um, how about you? How's this experience for you? Mm-hmm. I feel so amazing. <laughs> I feel like um uh, improve my English is a lot of experience. Oh, that's this, good. This is my first time to join. Is all is talking English because. Uh, I got joined the Toastmaster, but it's the Chinese one. So, because my English is very, very, very not good lah. So, this experience is so whole life also cannot forget lah. <laughs> so scary yeah. and so excited lah. You know, I I think I think it's brave of you to come into a competition that is in a language you are not used to. So congratulations <laughs> on that. Not a lot of people would do it. I know I wouldn't. So I hope you feel really proud of yourself for doing this. Um, I don't know if we have. We might not have very long. Uh, but I just want to wish you guys all again good luck. I think you guys did a fantastic job. I hope it reflects well later during your press press statement. Um, and yeah, wishing you all the luck, guys. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Davina. And thank you for all the feedback. It was really really helpful. I'm glad. Uh, thank, I'm glad. You, thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. So- There's, uh, I hope you guys for like all the effort you've already put in just like set the pace lah. So we all did fine. Yeah. All right, uh, Miss Davina, I have informed them to move you into group five, which is the second slot. Okay. I also took a few pictures just now along the way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can take one now. We can take one as well. Okay. 
Hi. Uh, are you ready? Okay. okay. Three, two, one. Okay, fantastic. Okay, we just wait for a little moment to be moved to the. Okay, she was moved. <laughs> Okay, uh, so guys, so... Uh, yeah, okay, I'm going to the room five as well. Okay. All right. Bye, Amanda. Bye, Amanda. Thank you. Um, okay, bye, so bye. I'll... Bye. Okay, so I'll just uh, make the relevance of the public manner. Through this case, uh, we have a better understanding of the concerns that these laws and fines are not reflective of the socio socioeconomic environment and may cause negative societal consequences. We also acknowledge that this, this decisions, sorry, we make will affect different communities, uh, making this a crucial conversation. After a period of consideration and thorough discussion, we have decided to propose a new initiative with the help and approval of our lawmakers to achieve a cohesive and comprehensive solution for this concern, which will take into account the voice of the public. With every situation, there are many stakeholders involved. For instance, we may wish to take into account the well being of other small businesses uh, who may be affected by the incident. We do not want them to be fearful of running their businesses or receiving negative attention. At the same time, informal workers who are not covered. The actions of the hawker who despite his financial situation is still putting many in danger through his actions by contributing to the transmission of COVID-19. After considering the different opinions of all the stakeholders involved, we have come to believe the solution we have at hand will be the best to address the concerns of disparities in our current system and build a more equitable compromise. Our proposal comes in the form of a three-step process. Firstly, the formation of a committee uh, that will include lawmakers, business owners, workers, experts, for example, economic analysts, and of course, the general public. This committee will serve those who struggle financially, while also keeping large companies in line. These income brackets will not simply follow our current tax brackets as there are still large disparities between top and bottom earners in each bracket. Instead, the exact figures of the fines will come from the committee itself. Why do we wish to introduce this new system? In practical terms, there is no advantage to handing out fines that are not feasible. Under the old system, there was the dilemma where those who go into debt because of the fine must resort to seeking additional sources of income. As a result, this will only provide an incentive for breaking the law again. We cannot allow this vicious cycle to plague our people who are already struggling to make ends meet. And from a societal standpoint, we should extend our empathy. Every single person is struggling right now, but something as small as making fines more feasible to pay will make a world of difference. To implement this step, we will produce a new financial declaration form so we can better understand the financial situation of the individual in question. Background checks will also be concluded on the individual and or household income to prevent abuse of this leniency. Lastly, we will also introduce a payment schedule for fines. The schedule we will repartition fines on a monthly basis with minimum payments. The length and minimum payment will be agreed upon between the individual and committee. We hope this will aid in easing the financial burden of the offenders, while also increasing the probability of the fine being paid. To circumvent fine dodgers or abuse, there will be a fee leveraged on top of the fine for every payment session missed. We believe this new process will act as a sufficient deterrent to potential law violations while incorporating a more equitable solution. Malaysia is a young country <laughs> full of potential, but with development comes growing pains. Like mentioned before, justice is not merely the adherence of laws. It is also the practice of ending discrimination in our country together. We are proud to see that our Malaysian people are keen in taking a stand for, the, for their beliefs and taking active steps to shape our legislation, uh, legislative system together with the lawmakers. We look forward to fruitful cooperation between all parties involved 
in promoting equality and equity in our system. Thank you very much for your patience and time. We will now open the floor to receive questions from the audience. Yeah. That's good. That's really good. How long was that? Um, it was eight minutes, 50 seconds. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, you guys have a really good flow, a really good structure. Before we go into anything, how do you feel after going through the whole round of it? Um, I think it was okay. <laughs> was it okay? 14, 14 seems a bit nervous. It's okay. Uh, it's okay to be a bit nervous. Is this uh, your first? Uh, Ali, is this your first public policy competition for all of you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. I think, okay, first of all, let's go through the, the whole structure of everything. I think you guys have laid it down really, really well. Um, mm -hmm. It's easy to see what the issues are. It's easy to see what the problems you're proposing. It's easy to see who is affected. So you have a very good structure going in. Fatin, mm -hmm. I think um, you've done a really good job at setting the foundation. Um, you do come off a little bit nervous at certain points, but I think that's completely fine. Just remember, you have your script. Your policy is fine. When you're going into it, take a deep breath and just know that no one else knows what you're going to say. So even if it, it doesn't sound right, nobody else can tell. So as long as you sound like you know what you're doing, you're fine. Mm -hmm. um, so you did a really good job. I hope you're proud of yourself. Then um, also really good at articulating why these policies are important, um, why you are implementing implementing it the way that you are. So you guys have done a really good job at laying the foundation throughout your entire speech. So you have that to leverage on. Um, so that's a really good start. The couple of things that I have noticed that I think can maybe uh, take it a step higher is, mm -hmm. number one, I noticed that you guys didn't introduce yourselves. So you go straight into it. So you go, so I think for both of you, you go straight into it. So mm -hmm. I would actually suggest um, Patin, when you are starting, introduce yourself and introduce Jan. So okay. say that. So tell us your name. Tell us your role. Um, and maybe introduce yourself as an organ, like your organization. Like why are you here? Why are you giving? Why are you part of this organization? Giving this seat, you know. So that that wasn't there in the beginning. So that's something that you will definitely want to add. Um, mm -hmm. what else did I notice? Can we go into the, yes, the solution, this page. Mm. So in this part, what did I notice? Under your formation of a committee, uh, mm -hmm. I realized that then uh, you talked about, you talked about including diversity in this, in this particular committee, which is a really good part. But mm -hmm. I think where you could leverage on is also um, articulate, right, that with this diversity, what you are basically trying to do is provide a sense of check and balance. So okay. you do not want it. So you you do not want a uh, biasness. You do not want anyone to misuse this role in this committee, uh, mm -hmm. to sit down and and make judgments that might not be fair. So that okay. is why you have included all of these very different people from these different uh, backgrounds, right? Mm -hmm. So great that you said it was diverse. But why is it diverse? What are you trying to achieve with that diversity? So you might want to um, explain on that a little bit more so it makes this sound a little bit more concrete. Okay, the next thing is the adverse effects of disproportionate. So I think what was super strong for you guys was that you also talked about um, what was the adverse effect of disproportionate fines on underprivileged communities. So I like that you stressed on that a lot and you and you mentioned, like you, you laid it down like, oh, if you find them too much, it puts them back in that cycle of committing this sort of crime and that's not um, conducive for us as a society. That is a super strong point that you have put forward, and it makes mm -hmm. it, and it makes me want to like, oh, this is exactly why your policy is important. Like I buy into it immediately on that part. So I think mm -hmm. as you are talking about it, mm -hmm. uh, make sure you're stressing on it during your your press statement later. Like that okay. is the part that you really want to push forward. Um, okay. and I think so. One thing that you can add to add to that part to make it a little bit. Uh, to make it a little bit more like strong is also just to add that you know by changing the so your strong suit right now is the mm -hmm. fact that you are going to be giving fines based on the income bracket mm -hmm. so that is uh, that is a strong suit uh, because it, it that creates a difference between equality and equity right 
So what you want to say is that with such a policy, so we don't see that many policies like that. It's quite like blanket statement most of the time. Add that this can really change the way you measure equality and equity in policy making. So, talk, so don't just talk about how this is also affecting um, this particular situation. Because you, you're around eight minutes, right? Mm-hmm. And I think part of, so I was telling the last team this also. So this is not a, this is not a court case. In a court case, you want to be like super factual. But in a press statement, you want to really emphasize um, on the values. You want to make yourself sound strong. You're basically putting out a public persona, right? You're, you're demonstrating mm-hmm. that you're answering to questions. You're being scrutinized. So enunciating on values is a really important part as well of press statements. So what you want to be able to talk about is that policies like this create a, you want to, you want to be able to uh, say like policies create, let's say this create, um, I'm blanking on the word, but it's basically, you're setting the tone for how other policies mm-hmm. can be later on. You know, you're providing an example of taking these, these sort of things into consideration. So you can talk mm-hmm. about these sort of things to make your case much, much stronger as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So these are all the big points that you guys have that I think you should definitely leverage on. Other than that, okay. Um, everything else is quite solid to be honest. Um, except for the other thing that I told you to refine your number two, to add mm-hmm. why communities are um outraged by this, why they're upset about mm-hmm. it. Go into that a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Does that make okay. sense so far? Yeah, mm-hmm. but other than that, you guys a really good job. I hope, like, I know you're nervous, Patin, but you guys did a really fantastic job. So I hope you're not worried. You're not too worried at all. You're gonna do amazing. We're really proud of yourselves for putting it together so fast. The the ones who are going to be doing Q and A, how are you guys feeling? <laughs> Uh, so different different prepping styles, right? Q and A. You cannot, yeah. you don't know what's coming up. How so how are you feeling about the questions that might come? Are you worried about any sort of questions that you think you might get? Mm, mostly on the uh, if they go on to the details or maybe the timelines of this kind of solution, they may be a bit a bit. Hmm. Uh, For example, yeah. let's like what what's in your head? We can maybe hash through a little bit here as well. Uh, like. Um, oh, blank, right? Uh, like for the solution implementation, uh, the time needed, you know, mm. like if they don't pay, how many days should be chased after them? You know, those small, small details. Eh? Mm. Yeah. So how are you planning to answer things with that? Um, for, you know, <laughs> um, if like let's say they don't pay on time, so of course we will have the um the fines, you know, those kind of percentages as previously stated, they will they will incur additional fees to kind of pro, uh, encourage them to pay uh, sooner or on time. So if they don't pay on time, we would uh I was thinking about maybe um, uh, sending reminders or like three type like the three chances if they really don't pay then maybe we have to like shorten the period or even find someone to go and you know uh, pay for the fine something like that mm. so here i think so here's a hack right when you get mm. questions like that uh, and you're gonna scramble and, and you feel like you don't know how to answer you don't have to come up with a solution on the spot because sometimes the the problem is if they ask you a question and you feel like I need to come up with a solution. And then you're like, oh, we'll go, um, let's just say like example three, three reminders, whatever. You haven't had time to think about this solution. So when you suddenly say it, it might create more holes in your, um, yeah. your whole argument, right? So if you only, but only apply this if you are unsure about what you are proposing. If you feel like you are sure about it, then it's fine to say it. But say you don't, you're unsure um, and you worry that they might poke holes in it. You don't have, keep this in mind the more information you give them uh sometimes during q and a only and uh, not the press statement the more information you give them the more room they have to to poke holes in your argument so what you want to be able to do is press because during your press statement they've already laid down the foundation for the values for the implementation the solution how you're going to run the solutions everything's quite stated there so if they ask you things on like timeline or whatever then you can sit down and say like you know um you, you have a process that you will run through. You have people who will be looking at it and you'll take this at an ad hoc basis because there's no one step all, there's no uh, one solution fit all. 
you know so you can talk about if this these are the ways you kind of evade the really hard questions uh sometimes politicians do it all the time so think like mm-hmm. a politician really um but yeah you don't if you feel like unsure about anything like that just go back to whatever was stated in the press statement and pick out the parts that you feel like okay i i can just push this part just push on that and then let them know like hey we've already for example at uh, the timeline question we set up the committee we set up the schedule we have to take it at an ad hoc level because the priority here is we want to make sure that especially the underprivileged communities their situation is being taken into account and that we don't believe in a one solution fit all uh, situation and we want to be able to make sure that our our rakya is being uh, treated with the uh, with the fairness that they deserve so that's how you can phrase it for example if you don't have a genuine solution off the bat yeah uh someone i remember someone said this once uh, which i i still today i was uh, like if somebody asks you a question a hard question don't answer the hard question ask the answer the question you wish you were asked so that's kind of like how that's the mindset going into it it's quite helpful actually uh, but it takes some practice but other than that i think the q and a part you guys should be okay because it's not many holes uh, in your argument unless you really like yeah the rest of you wilson harris how are you guys feeling yeah and a bit nervous i just scared that uh, i don't understand you know some some teach uh, some judges that ask the question with the very hard vocabulary i scared that i don't understand some hard vocabulary and some you know some answer that uh, not that level that we can answer just like uh, uh, some very detailed thing some that uh, just something like that just nervous about that but other than that, just just answer but that answer the question based on uh, what we know before yeah mm-hmm. it's good yeah. i think um, because you guys have a, a committee right that you're setting up if you do get questions like that you don't understand just say that part of the guidelines within this community is you will decide on these factors then So you don't have to come up with a solution. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Hi. How are you feeling? Good. Uh. Yeah. Good. I'm just. I'm. Uh. I'm just worried about whether or not they will ask. Like, if this is a real life event, then they will have a uh, real life, you know, like chronology to the case. Like, uh, you know, someone. willing to pay the fine for their behalf and what not so mm. yeah mm. that would be more difficult to answer yeah i think so you you will get you might get difficult questions but again remember like this for one this is obviously a, a competition so okay yeah, and the big rounds are going to end soon um, but just remember again you guys have a really good foundation you're going to do amazing uh, do not worry breathe um, good luck to all of you i think you've done a fantastic job and you should be fine during your session uh, so please give yourself a pat on the back um can someone um stop sharing screen cuz i need to take a picture <laughs> how do i stop sharing oh no oh i'll uh, share that yeah Stop share. Okay, did it. Yeah. Okay, everyone smile. Okay, one, two, three. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, thank guys. Good so luck much. once again. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Davina. Okay. Thank you. Much. Okay, I'll see you guys in the main room. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Good luck, everyone. Good luck. Good luck. Oh. Okay.